Hello everyone, this is Theo. Welcome to another watercolor video. In today's video, we are going to look at different variations of burnt sienna. Now the idea for today's video actually came from a question that someone has asked me. So the person said that he or she started using Winston Newton's burnt sienna and when he or she switched over to the Daniel Smith version, I mean, the person didn't quite like it. So the question is, is there a burnt sienna that looks like Winston Newton's version? But for some reason, um, the person does not want to get the Winston Newton burnt sienna. He wanted something within the Daniel Smith uh, line of watercolor. So today we are going to paint some color swatches. We are going to mix some colors with burnt sienna and see uh, what are the differences between all these burnt sienna or burnt sienna like colors. These are the different burnt siennas that I have. I'm going to start by painting the swatch for Daniel Smith's version. Now burnt sienna, the pigment that is usually used to create burnt sienna is PBR7. This is a nice transparent earth tone. The other pigment that is used to create burnt sienna is PBR7, which is actually used by Winston Newton. Next, we have Italian Burnt Sienna. This is also PBR7. Now, depending on how the pigment is treated, the colors are going to look different. So a lot of other colors use PBR7 as well, like Raw Sienna, Burnt Umber, Raw Umber. All those are earth tones, they use PBR7. I added a bit more paint here to make the color look a bit richer and now we have Daniel Smith's transparent brown oxide. So this is the pigment that is used by Winston Newton to create their burnt sienna. This is PR101 and you can see that this color is quite intense. It's quite strong. Next up we have transparent red oxide. So earlier on that was transparent brown oxide. This is transparent red oxide. Now this is more reddish. This is way more reddish compared to the three colors earlier on. Next we have transparent sienna from Schmincker. This is PBR7. And this is very reddish. This is very warm. Let me dilute this. And now we have the burnt sienna from Schmincker. This is PBR7 and PBK9. So this burnt sienna is a mix of two pigments. And this is English red ochre. This is much darker. This is PR101. And finally we have the Winston Newton burnt sienna PR101. I started out using Winston Newton's Burnt Sienna as well, and I like it. So when I switched over to Daniel Smith's version, um, it looked quite different. The swatches have dried nicely. By the way, I do not have all the different brands of Burnt Sienna, obviously. If you want to check out other versions, you can visit Jane Blundell's website. She has some Burnt Sienna swatches as well from M. Graham, O. Holland, Art Spectrum, and even Rembrandt. I'll put a link to her blog in the video description below. So these are the different burnt sienna and burnt sienna-like colors that I have. At a glance, they all look slightly different. So these three colors, they look a bit close. We have Daniel Smith burnt sienna, Daniel Smith transparent brown oxide, and English ochre. English ochre, English red ochre looks like a darker, a more intense version of burnt sienna. So you can probably dilute this to get this color. As for transparent brown oxide, this look a bit more brown compared to this two. And transparent red oxide, it's more reddish compared to the brown oxide. So even though these four colors use the same pigment PR101, they look different. And Winston Newton's version of burnt sienna looks very different compared to this 
three. Schmincke transparent sienna, Schmincke burnt sienna, and Winston Newton burnt sienna. They lean towards the orange side. This is a swatch of crinocridon burnt orange. So these four colors, they look close, but of course they are different at the same time. On top, we have the colors that are leaning more towards the brown and neutral side. But this is more reddish. And now I'm going to do some color mixing with burnt sienna. I am not going to use all eight. I'm just going to use this five Daniel Smith burnt sienna, Daniel Smith Italian burnt sienna, transparent brown oxide, transparent red oxide, and Winston Newton burnt sienna. I'm not using this because this looks quite similar to this. I'm not using this because this looks quite similar to this, and this looks like this and this. The most common use for burnt sienna is to mix it with a blue to produce those beautiful greys. So for example, if you mix it with French ultramarine, you would get a warm grey and that has a lot of texture. That's great for painting clouds, very ominous clouds. If you mix it with phthalo blue, you can get cool greys. And if you mix it with cerulean blue, you have greys that are a bit more subtle. So here I have drawn out some grids. I'm going to be mixing this burnt siennas or the earth colors with French ultramarine in the first row, phthalo blue and cerulean blue in the last row. As much as possible, I'm going to let the colors mix on the paper rather than mix them completely in the palette. So this is what we get with Daniel Smith burnt sienna and French ultramarine. I should have added a bit more water in this swatch here to let you see the gradation from the darker tones to the lighter tones. Anyway, I have added more water here and this is how the mixture looks like. This is Italian burnt sienna and this is ultramarine. So at the top, I'm going to use more paint and at the bottom, we add more water. Transparent brown oxide and ultramarine. Transparent red oxide and French ultramarine. And lastly, we have Winston Newton burnt sienna and French ultramarine. The French ultramarine that I'm using is the Daniel Smith version. Next, I'm going to mix them with Thalo blue. So this is Daniel Smith's version again with Thalo blue. Thalo blue is a very strong color, so I need to be careful. Italian burnt sienna with Thalo blue. Transparent brown oxide with phthalo blue. Transparent red oxide with phthalo blue. Winston Newton burnt sienna is the last one. And lastly, we have cerulean blue with burnt sienna. Italian burnt sienna.
transparent brown oxide transparent red oxide and lastly Winston Newton burnt sienna with cerulean blue chromium The swatches have dried very nicely. Let's take a closer look. So the first row was painted with French ultramarine, second row with thalo blue, green shade, and the third row with cerulean blue chromium. This is the washed out version of this. So these are the different types of grays we can get. And from what I can see, I notice some magenta or violet hues. It's very, very subtle. I think I can only see it because I'm comparing it with the Windsor and Newton version, the Windsor and Newton Burn Sienna with French Ultramarine. So you can see the difference between these two. This has a little bit more violet hue to it, and this is a bit more neutral, a bit warmer. So with Italian Burnt Sienna, we get this. You may notice that there is a lot of granulation here, that's because the paper surface on this particular side, it's more rough compared to the other side. This is actually painted on the other side of the paper. So with Italian burnt sienna, it looks like this. This is with transparent brown oxide. Let's compare that with burnt sienna. I actually kind of like this as well. This is transparent red oxide with French ultramarine. Definitely a bit more granulation here compared to transparent brown oxide. And lastly, we have Winston Newton Burnt Sienna with French Ultramarine. So this is the washed out version. When mixed with phthalo blue green shade, it's actually not easy to achieve the cool grays. And the only color that was able to do so relatively easier is actually Daniel Smith Burnt Sienna with Thalo Blue Green Shade. Thalo Blue doesn't have any granulation, but when mixed with Burnt Sienna, which has, we still get some granulation. This is Italian Burnt Sienna with Thalo Blue. And this is Transparent Brown Oxide with Thalo Blue. Transparent Red Oxide with Thalo Blue. You can see the contrast between the, these two colors is actually quite strong. And transparent red oxide, the granulation, it's, it's quite beautiful. It's very obvious. This is burnt sienna with thalo blue. If you think these four mixtures look a bit greenish, well, it does, especially with the burnt sienna from Winsor & Newton. And lastly, we have cerulean blue chromium. So this is Daniel Smith Burnt Sienna mixed with Cerulean Blue Chromium. And I actually like this mixture more than the one when mixed with Ultramarine. So here's a comparison. This is Italian Burnt Sienna with Cerulean Blue Chromium. It's also very nice. Transparent Brown Oxide. Transparent red oxide. Once again, we have a lot of textures here and here as well a lot of granulation And lastly, Winston Newton burnt sienna with cerulean blue chromium again Seems to be a little uh, hint of green in it, especially when I look from afar So when you let the colors mix on the paper rather than mix them completely on the palette You can see the individual colors um, showing which is really nice. It really shows off the individual colors that you use to mix the mixture, such as in this case here. So which burnt sienna or the lookalike colors do you prefer? I've been using Daniel Smith burnt sienna and Italian burnt sienna for a very long time. So I don't mind using them going forward in the future. Personally, I think Daniel Smith Burnt Sienna, it's a bit more versatile, so when mixed with French Ultramarine, we get this sort of mixtures. 
This is with Thalo Blue and with Cerulean Blue. It seems to be a bit more versatile compared to Winston and Newton's version. When mixed with Thalo Blue and Cerulean Blue, with the Winston and Newton version, they look a bit more greenish. But I like this color when mixed with French Ultramarine. The other color that I like is actually Transparent Red Oxide. I find the mixtures to be quite exciting because there is a lot of granulation and it doesn't mix well with the blue so you can see the color separation which makes the mixture a bit more interesting. So transparent red oxide is more reddish, transparent brown oxide is more brown and it's a bit darker. So these are the two variations you can check out. Both are PR101, same as the Winston Newton Burnt Sienna, but they look very different. If you want to try something a bit different compared to the Daniel Smith Burnt Sienna, maybe you can try Daniel Smith English Red Ochre because this is sort of like the more intense version of Burnt Sienna. Let me know in the comment section which earth tones are you using currently and which do you prefer. I will scan all these swatches in high resolution and put them on my blog so that you can download them. The link will be in the video description below. So that's all for today's video. I hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.